Today's pain is tomorrow's power. Don't get burned twice by the same flame. While we breathe, we will hope. When I do good, I feel good. When I do bad, I feel bad. And that's my religion. You can tell the greatness of a man by what makes him angry. Leave nothing for tomorrow which can be done today. You can't let your failures define you. You have to let your failures teach you. Change is not easy, but always possible. If you don't let go of the wrong people, you'll never meet the right people. The leaders we revere, the businesses and institutions that last, are not generally the result of a narrow pursuit of popularity or personal advancement, but of devotion to some bigger purpose. The most important advice I give to young people is just learn how to get stuff done. Worry more about what you want to do than what you want to be. Even when things are tough, don't lose respect for the other person. Every single one of you has something to offer. Every single one of you has a responsibility to discover what that is. No matter what you want to do with your life, I guarantee you'll need an education to do it. The world is waiting for you, ready to be changed. For all the cruelty and hardship of our world, we are not mere prisoners of fate. Our actions matter. Change will not come if we wait for some other person or some other time. We are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the change that we seek. The future rewards those who press on. I don't have time to feel sorry for myself. I don't have time to complain. I'm going to press on. Money is not the only answer, but it makes a difference. If the people cannot trust their government to do the job for which it exists, to protect them and to promote their common welfare, all else is lost. My fellow Americans, we are and always will be a nation of immigrants. We were strangers once too. We worship an awesome God in the blue states and we don't like federal agents poking around our libraries in the red states. We coach Little League in the blue states and have gay friends in the red states. We want everybody to act like adults, quit playing games, realize that it's not just my way or the highway. A good compromise, a good piece of legislation is like a good sentence or a good piece of music. Everybody can recognize it. They say, huh, it works, it makes sense. In a world of complex threats, our security and leadership depends on all elements of our power, including strong and principled diplomacy. I'm a warrior for the middle class. We can't drive our SUVs and eat as much as we want and keep our homes on 72 degrees at all times and then just expect that other countries are going to say, okay, that's not leadership, that's not going to happen. Issues are never simple. One thing I'm proud of is that very rarely will you hear me simplify the issues. I don't oppose all wars. What I'm opposed to is a dumb war.
What I'm opposed to is a rash war. Over the last 15 months, we've traveled to every corner of the United States. I've now been in 57 states. I think one left to go. If you're walking down the right path and you're willing to keep walking, eventually you'll make progress. We need to steer clear of this poverty of ambition where people want to drive fancy cars and wear nice clothes and live in nice apartments but don't want to work hard to accomplish these things. Everyone should try to realize their full potential. There is not a liberal America and a conservative America. There is the United States of America. There is not a black America and a white America and Latino America and Asian America. There's the United States of America. Now, as a nation, we don't promise equal outcomes, but we were founded on the idea everybody should have an equal opportunity to succeed. No matter who you are, what you look like, where you come from, you can make it. That's an essential promise of America. Where you start should not determine where you end up. I've got a pen and I've got a phone, and I can use that pen to sign executive orders and take executive actions and administrative actions that move the ball forward. I believe marriage is between a man and a woman. I am not in favor of gay marriage. But when you start playing around with constitutions just to prohibit somebody who cares about another person, it just seems to me that's not what America's about. Usually, our constitutions expand liberties. They don't contract them. It was the labor movement that helped secure so much of what we take for granted today. The 40-hour work week, the minimum wage, family leave, health insurance, social security, Medicare, retirement plans. The cornerstones of the middle class security all bear the union label. What Washington needs is adult supervision. Let us remember we are all part of one American family. We are united in common values, and that includes belief in equality under the law, basic respect for public order, and the right of peaceful protest. I see Americans of every party, every background, every faith who believe that we are stronger together. Black, white, Latino, Asian, Native American, young, old, gay, straight, men, women, folks with disabilities, all pledging allegiance under the same proud flag to this big, bold country that we love. That's what I see. That's the America I know. Today, we are engaged in a deadly global struggle for those who would intimidate, torture and murder people for exercising the most basic freedoms. If we are to win this struggle and spread those freedoms, we must keep our own moral compass pointed in a true direction. Now we're in the midst of not just advocating for change, not just calling for change. We're doing the grinding, sometimes frustrating work of delivering change, inch by inch, day by day. Why can't I just eat my waffle? I mean, I do think at a certain point you've made enough money. Focusing your life solely on making a buck shows a certain poverty of ambition. It asks too little of yourself because it's only when you hitch your wagon to something larger than yourself that you realize your true potential. It took a lot of blood, sweat and tears to get to where we are today, but we have just begun. 
Today, we begin in earnest the work of making sure that the world we leave our children is just a little bit better than the one we inhabit today. In the end, that's what this election is about. Do we participate in a politics of cynicism or a politics of hope? Our higher education system is one of the things that makes America exceptional. There's no place else that has the assets we do when it comes to higher education. People from all over the world aspire to come here and study here, and that is a good thing. To achieve bigger, keep three things private at any cost, your income, your next move, and your love life. It's not surprising then, they get bitter, they cling to guns or religion or antipathy to people who aren't like them, or anti-immigrant sentiment or anti-trade sentiment as a way to explain their frustrations. We prove that we are still a people capable of doing big things and tackling our biggest challenges. I've got two daughters, nine years old and six years old. I am going to teach them first of all about values and morals. But if they make a mistake, I don't want them punished with a baby. The thing about hip-hop today is it's smart, it's insightful. The way they can communicate a complex message in a very short space is remarkable. What I'm asking for is hard. It's easier to be cynical, to accept that change isn't possible, and politics is hopeless, and to believe that our voices and actions don't matter. But if we give up now, then we forsake a better future. If you were successful, somebody along the line gave you some help. Somebody helped to create this unbelievable American system that we have that allowed you to thrive. Somebody invested in roads and bridges. If you've got a business, you didn't build that. Somebody else made that happen. In December, I agreed to extend the tax cuts for the wealthiest Americans because it was the only way I could prevent a tax hike on middle-class Americans. But we cannot afford one trillion dollars worth of tax cuts for every millionaire and billionaire in our society. We can't afford it, and I refuse to renew them again.